Attention, View the Right Thing listeners. On this episode of View the Right Thing, Wes and Steve take up watch against the threat of an attack on Hollywood with a cast of hysteria-wracked World War II-era Californians convinced that invading Japanese forces are about to land ashore. Featuring Dan Aykroyd, Christopher Lee, Lorraine Gary, John Belushi, and more in Steven Spielberg's comedy 1941. And now it's time for View the Right Thing. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, everyone. Whoa. We're finally back. Hi, everyone. It's been so long, Steve. I missed you. Well, we've been doing a lot of viewing of the right things, but we've been just on a break from the talking about the viewing. That's all. Sure. I guess if you say so. Welcome back. Welcome back to you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we got some tea. We got some iced tea here. Mm. And we, uh, we picked a doozy of a movie to come back ooh, on, continuing ooh. our Steven Spielberg Odyssey. Yeah, it was and, a thing. Uh, it, it was a thing. Um, One of the most destructive movies I've ever seen, maybe. Yeah. Well, before we get into that, uh, tell me, Steve. Yeah. Have you seen anything in the theater recently? Absolutely, I have. Let me think. What was the most recent thing I saw? I don't know. I went to a special screening of The Fog a couple of weekends ago. Mm -hmm. That was very entertaining. I'd never seen that movie in full. Um, You know, I'd only ever seen it on TV with commercial breaks and whatnot. Yeah. I saw Cruising at a midnight screening a little while ago. Wow. It's a lot of older movies. Yeah. um, Good old The New Art over there in... uh, Santa Monica, you get you get those Friday night midnight screenings. They got some pretty cool stuff. Is that the one where they have like couches and stuff in the? No, I think that was Cine Family, Cine and Family. I don't know if Cine Family is still going anymore. I'm yeah. hoping that they just you know some other company took it over. What's the one that Tarantino bought? That's the new Beverly. The new Beverly. There's all these new art, new Beverly. Yeah. I, my, I like the new Beverly a lot. I'm a very large man. It's got some really narrow seats, so no, that no. part I don't like. But the new art is just great, and I've had only perfect popcorn while there. So I'm trying to, trying to relegate my popcorn even to only at the new art. The Vista on Santa Monica has the best leg room in the world. Mm. That's just my brief rundown. Saw oh. Mandy in the theater. Oh, excellent. Did you see Mandy yet? I haven't. It's a Legion M movie, the company that I Oh yeah. bought into a little bit. Um, it's one of theirs. Well, I saw it in the theater. Did you enjoy it? Weeks ago. I can't stop thinking about it. That's good. I bought it on Blu-ray. Ooh. I have not yet rewatched it. That's exciting. But boy, oh boy, is that something else, that movie. Yeah. Mandy. So, dear listener, if you haven't seen Mandy yet, text at VTRT Movies and ask us text? if you Twitter. should. Tweet at, Tweet at us. Tweet at us. What did I say? Text? text? Or you can send us a message on Instagram. Oh, or on Instagram, yes. And, and ask us if you should see Mandy, and then we'll look at your profile and we'll try to figure out, is Mandy the right movie for you? Because it might not be, folks. But it was right for me. What movies have you been to in the theaters lately? Well, I saw Bohemian Rhapsody, mm. which you listeners can uh, listen to that episode. It is available now. Oh yeah, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's a mini. That's a mini episode. So I'm gonna do oh. some. I'm gonna do some uh, shorter, like twenty to thirty minute episodes with Desi. Oh, that's cool. Uh, for theatrical films, occasionally nice. now. So. So that's available now for people to listen to. I will warn you, um, at the beginning we say whether we will recommend it, yeah. but then we do after that get into spoilers. So that way people know whether or not to go see it, or that's whether what thinking. we think about it, uh, before we get into the the spoily bits. But um, That's good thinking. And do you warn about the spoilers each time? I, I tried to. Well, I mean, we've only done the one episode so far, so I did try to... So far you're one for one? There was, a, there was a warning for a really minor spoiler, and then once we really got into it, then was, there was a, a quick warning that we were going to get into heavy spoilers. Oh, all right. So um, so you're pretty safe to listen to that episode. All right. Um, I'll check it out. But... Uh, yeah, so I saw that. I saw um, the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. 
Uh, it was. Um, I didn't even know that opened yet. Yeah, it opened uh, last week. So um, the sister-in-law, one of the, my sister-in-laws, uh, really wanted to see it. Nutcracker. So we went on the Thursday night opening for it. Whoa! How and was that? Was, yeah, um, it was fine. Okay, it wasn't uh, packed full of. No, it wasn't packed. It, there was there was a few cracker heads. That sounds almost racist. There were a few, a little almost racist, but uh, I get what you mean. Nutcracker fiends there. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, you don't you don't need to run out and see it. I I it was okay. All right. It was a. It was maybe middle of the road, just uh, maybe slightly below average for a film. Okay. I think it's it's. Uh, see, I don't know if Disney and I are going to talk about it on a podcast. I don't know if I want to get too heavy into it, but I um, you, you know, you can tweet at us, and I'll 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 message you back and tell you what I thought. But I I thought it lacked a, a lot. Huh. It could have been. It could have been a lot more interesting. I thought they. Um, they sort of set up a really interesting opportunity to have a film where they, a magical film where they explore like loss and grief. Yeah. And they, they didn't, just didn't go that direction at all. Oh, what? Yeah. I think they wanted you to think they did, but they didn't. Oh. Uh, so. How many dance numbers are there? Uh, it depends on what you mean by dance numbers. So mm-hmm. there are some scenes where people are dancing. Makes sense. Um, but that's not a dance number. Like they're at an event. Yeah. And like a, like a not a ball exactly. They're at a Christmas party and everybody's dancing. Any like all right, you know, people dance at a party. Uh, but they don't have full like the, ballet extravaganza. There's like... one big dance number in okay. the mi- right in the middle of the movie. Oh, and then there is a a really like well done, beautiful sort of ballet slash hip hop thing mm. um, in the credits. In the credits. So, that's not a spoiler. It's in the credits. Is it better than when the Mad Hatter dances the Futterwhacking at the end of of Alice in Wonderland? The dancing is better. That's good to know. I don't know that the movie's any better. Mmm. Um, uh, yeah. The Nutcracker and the... What's the Curse of the Four Realms? The... Nutcracker and the Four Realms, I think, is what it's called. The Nutcracker and it's, the Four. It's based on the original Realms. book, which oh, yeah. the ballet is based on. Right. Um, but then I, you know, it's pretty. It's it uses the book as like a, a sort of a launching point, and it's got moments from it, but it doesn't. I don't think it's that faithful. All right. Um, I, I'm hesitant to say I would recommend it to people because I know, like, on one hand, it's very women empowerment which is great all right um I, so like a part of me wants to say like oh if you got a little girl take your little girl to it um because the three main characters of the film are all strong women all right on the other hand i know that for a lot of families it's you know it's difficult to, to take your kids to the movies because it's expensive mm-hmm. so you know if you have a family of three or four people you know, you're going to be spending probably a minimum of 30 to $40 to take your family to this movie. Yikes. And it, uh, I don't think it was worth $40. Ooh. Um, so. Ouch. So, you know, uh, it's also not very Christmassy. If you're like, what? oh, I love the Chris, I love the Nutcracker and I love Christmas. Um, so I, I'm, and I, you're one of those people that starts Christmas in October or whatever and you're just, not so about it. The movies, it, there's Christmas at the beginning, and Christmas at the end, but all the stuff in the middle, which is the main chunk of the story, the the Nutcracker realm stuff. Yeah, um, that stuff is not Christmassy. What the deuce? And once once they're in that world, there's very little of the Nutcracker music in it. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, I what? mean, it seems. What? Yeah, it's it's strange. It. The Nutcracker should be Christmassy. Yeah, it wasn't that Christmassy. Now, did they name each of the four realms? Is it like Slytherin? Yeah, it's, it's, those are actually it's a it's a Harry Potter spinoff. Whoa! Yeah, no, they do name. I the, think you're being sarcastic. They do. They do uh, name the four realms. Um, one of them is like the realm of winter, maybe or snow oh. or ice. Like there's a frozen realm. There's a realm of flowers. All right, uh, of fauna. Um, and then there's a realm of sweets, 
What? A realm of all sweets? Yeah, but I'm not going to spoil what the fourth realm is. Ooh. Just in case people want to go see it. A frozen realm, a fauna realm, a sweet realm. You could maybe guess it from the trailer, but... Um, all right. It's cool. I, I, I actually liked... I, I wish we could have spent more time in the fourth realm. Yeah. I, I thought it was a fun idea. Huh. But... Apparently it wasn't fun enough. Or maybe it was too fun and therefore too I can't costly say, to... Well, I can't say why. They, they don't spend more time there without without spoiling it. But Do they destroy a paint factory in one of the realms? Like in the movie we watched today. No, that, that makes I recall. Sense. I think that, that I recall. is probably for the best. Um, is there anything coming up that you're excited about? I gotta see mid-90s. Oh, I saw that too. Yeah, is it good? I liked it a lot. I hear it's very short. It's an hour and a half. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I heard somebody complaining that it's only like 70-something, and I thought, that seems I'm pretty sure it's an crazy. I'm pretty sure they were exaggerating. I'm pretty sure it's an hour and a half. Uh, I, right. I liked it a lot. I liked that they shot it in 4x3, or at least they, the final product is in 4x3. They could have chopped off the sides. Oh. Um, it, it feels... I think what, what people are like really latching onto is the nostalgia of it. Is yeah. It, but it's not a nostalgia grab. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something that feels very authentic to the 90s, but there's never really a moment in there where they're like, eh, remember uh, this thing? Right. That I, like, there's no, like, eh, remember Bill Clinton? Or, okay. or Two Princes never plays in the soundtrack. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh, Two Princes. So it's, Good one. it feels, though, while there is some 90s music, um, the soundtrack also features music from, like, the 70s. and That's good, because um, any music... Is better than '90s music. I would say there's a a documentary that came out this year called uh, Why Can't I Remember It? The '90s? No, it's a skateboarding documentary. It's on Hulu. Oh, and it's it's very very good. I wouldn't be surprised if it started getting talk for some award nominations. Um, and it is called I Can't. Remember, well, I'm gonna check Hulu right now. You could check Hulu, or you could check um, the VTRT Instagram because it's, I it was part of my 365 movie challenge. Oh, all right. Um, which is nearing its end, by the way. And it's a skateboarding movie. It's a skateboarding movie from the 90s, or no, 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 no. It's not mm-hmm. neither. Um, is it the Yellow Birds? No, that's a that's a war film. Is it? I want to say it was a little ways back, but. Oh gosh, what is that movie? It's gonna kill me. I'm seeing a whole lot of trying, Michael Myers. Trying, and well, in October I did a lot of uh, horror. I'll say. I might be able to like see it a little more quickly if you want to vamp, and I'll look on your phone. I see Brigsby Bear. Uh, it's around then, I think. Mm, oh man, what is that movie? Summer Camp. Boosters. Yeah, let me see your phone. Let me see your phone. You vamp for a second. Something with sweet Anton Yelchin. Well. We're looking up the title of this skateboard movie. I like anything that's about Minding skateboarding. the Gap. Minding the Gap is a skateboard movie? Yes. I don't think I ever knew that. So is it about British skaters? It is not. Oh. Um, it's a really beautiful documentary about um, friends who grew up together. They're all sort of from broken homes or families with domestic abuse issues. And um, they're in the... Midwest. They're in the Midwest. Oh, all right. Um, and um, the their friend, um, the director uh, of the movie, had been videotaping them since they were teenagers. Yeah. And so you really get a feel for watching these these young men grow up and become adults and face adult decisions and deal with the consequences of things from their families. Mm. Um, so the reason I bring that up is it is a really, I think it would be a really nice pairing with mid nineties. Oh, um, all right. They they really, Minding the Gap really um, demonstrates something that I think mid nineties wants you to pick up on, but doesn't really explore a ton of. Okay. And that's why skate. Okay. Why, why do I jump on this board? Um, and mid nineties is just a, a really beautiful example of that. Interesting. Well, now I gotta watch both. Mid nineties and minding the gap are a beautiful example of that. Mid nineties in theaters now. Minding the gap available on Hulu. Yes. 
pretty um, cool. Oh, so, anyways, you were saying some movies coming out that, and I uh, oh yeah, I kicked off at mid nineties. I gotta see Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I've seen Halloween twice. I've gotta see Bumblebee. Bumblebee. I mean, yeah, um, that's December. That's always no, that's a ways away. Um, 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 I don't know. I feel like there's a pretty decent amount of good yeah. stuff in right now. Well, there's a there's a whole bunch of things about to come out. I'm I'm looking forward to Widows. Widows. Viola with Davis. Viola Davis. Um, it's uh, Steam Queen directed that. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited good. to see. I, I think it'll be really good. Um, Roma. Is coming out soon. I don't even know about Roma. That's probably one of the front runners for Best Picture this year. What? Mark it down now. What about? I said it now. What about Border? Everybody's saying Border's supposed to be the next big thing. I don't think it'll be a Best Picture nominee. All right. I think I think you're probably looking at like Roma. If Beale Street could talk, which I think will be a really really big one. All right. Maybe Widows. Maybe. It might be a little too actiony. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones that are that I've been thinking about lately. Those are kind of the big ones right now. Ro- I think Rome is the uh, Beale Street probably. That's Pretty the, cool. Yeah. Oh, Star is Born will probably be a nominee. I still haven't seen that. It's good. It's very good. I believe it. I uh, it's very romantic. I gotta get to it. I keep you know I keep uh, relying on Movie Pass. Yeah, to kind of dictate what I can see, and uh, if you're using Movie Pass, then you feel my pain. I, I gotta say, um, Go not being on Movie Pass and being on the AMC app, yeah, um, it I, I, I like the AMC app so much better than I ever liked Movie Pass. Oh, that's perfectly understandable. Perfectly understandable. switch over, man. I might, I might, I don't know, because I still have so many very cheap theaters that are much closer to my home than an AMC. So in a way, it's like. If I can just keep dancing the movie pass dance, you know, I'm still getting how much? How much is movie pass costing you? Ten bucks. But you but you only can see half the movies you want to see. That's very true. So for but, like ten dollars more, you can go to AMC. You can see 3D. You can see IMAX. You can see Dolby. You can see Prime. Yeah, but then I got to go near an AMC. <laughs> That's true. And they're beautiful theaters. Don't get me wrong. It's more about Burbank's not that far from you. It's not that far at all. And it's a beautiful theater. There's three beautiful Real. AMC theaters very close to my neighborhood. Um, it's kind of just that neighborhood where they are. It's just, like, irksome. Yeah. It's just like, okay, we get it. Free parking. You figured out how to put a mall outdoors. We get it. But they got they got free parking over there. I know. I'm there a lot. I'm really just breaking balls. <laughs> oh, well, it's saying hi. So yeah, I'm probably going to switch over to the AMC Pass pretty soon, but you know, I you really get, love the theaters that are closer to my own neighborhood. You were, you were talking about popcorn earlier? Yeah. Yeah, you get a free popcorn upgrade. Free shmi, because sadly their popcorn ain't all that good. I don't think any movie popcorn is all that good. The New Art no. is perfect popcorn, my friend. No. Next time you go out to the New Art, you get a bag of popcorn. And I don't you know if I've ever been to the New enjoy Art. Enjoy it. Oh man, it's wonderful. Um, you also get free drink upgrades too, and you get a free drink, free large drink, and a free large popcorn your birthday month. That part's kind of cool. There's a lot of pretty good deals. I, I, this this is not a sponsored podcast, but no. um, but I think the AMC app, uh, you know, it's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, they, they... they're about to raise the price. Oh, really? January. Ooh. I don't know if they're still doing the guarantee your price for a year, but Whoa. if they are, maybe it's time to jump on it. Perhaps. Perhaps. Walt's well, saying hi. Walt well, does Once say again, hi. He's woofing away. Perhaps. Um, let's see. Those are some upcoming movies. Yeah. Did you see New Halloween? Did you podcast about New Halloween? We did yet? not podcast about New Halloween. I did see it, though. It was pretty entertaining. It was all right. They, uh, I think they pissed a lot of people off with that movie. You think so? Yeah. I haven't heard of people being pissed, but okay. No, I think a lot of people who have seen it really like it. Yeah. I think, and I really like it, but, and I think they did a lot of really ballsy things with it, but you know there are people walking out being like, what about Halloween too? Oh, man? sure. And it's like, hey, shut up. Ben Tramer's alive again, so you know what? <laughs> All is well with the world. I was so bummed out, though, there wasn't one mention of Steve Todd. 
Steve Todd. Yeah. We, you and I discussed that. Who's Steve Todd? So there's there are there are parts where um where Annie is talking to Lori and they they mention Ben Tramer a couple times, but she also mentions I never that heard it's Steve Todd. Todd. See, I used to only ever hear Steve Todd, and then the most recent time I watched it, she said Ben Tramer a lot more. But I looked up Steve Todd online, and tons of people are fully aware of the Steve Todd quotes. And I just think it's funny that, that I've never a character we never Steve met Todd. gets referenced a couple times, at least twice, and his name is two first names. One being my own, and the other being a buddy of mine that I grew up with. That's so weird. I don't remember Steve Todd at all. Let's just watch Halloween again no, after I'm this, okay. baby. I'm okay with that. Bing, dong, dong, I just bing, watched bing, it. Bing, 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 bing. I just watched all, all, all except for three. Again. Really? Oh, I didn't watch Resurrection. I only watched three this season. Yeah, uh, it, is this, it was the season of the witch. Season of the witch, you know. You got, you got beer. You got masks. I um, There was some season of the witch stuff in the new movie. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all three masks make an appearance. Yeah. Um, the little kid being babysat is actually a robot, which is pretty... <laughs> scares a lot of people when that gets revealed. I think that's He's what got, happens. Uh, I, I will say, I liked the... I thought the movie was eh for the first, like, hour. Oh, really? Um, but I thought the last half hour was <clears throat> exceptional. Yeah. I've heard similar... I've heard, sim- I've heard some people say, like, man, it was great all the way through. But I have heard... A good handful of people saying like it's kind of, kind of a little bit of a snooze, they, and then it gets really good. I enjoyed it the whole way. I mean, I, I had a good time. I just didn't feel like they did anything new or interesting in the first hour. Like uh, it felt like every other Halloween, especially having just watched all of them. Uh, I, I, it right. felt like just any. It could have been any slide. It could have been Scream. It could have been yeah. Scream would have been more interesting because at least there's phone calls. There are phone calls. Part of me wonders, maybe I made the subconscious decision to not watch any of the older Halloweens. Yeah. Specifically so that my brain would be fresh for this Halloween. Well, I wasn't clear 100% on whether or not they were going to ignore, like, H2O and stuff. So Apparently um, they did. And and the wife hadn't seen all of them. So, oh. so we, we watched them. And, I, you know, it was October and I hadn't seen yeah. them in a while. So why not? I'm never going to give you anybody a hard time for watching the Halloween movies. I yeah. love Halloween H2O. Michelle Williams forever. I said it. Okay. No, all I right. I said it before and I'll say it again. Oh, Wildlife. Wildlife. That's one I haven't seen yet that I really want to see. I feel like I just watched the trailer no, for that's, that. That's not Michelle Williams. That's Carrie. No. Uh, Carrie what's Mulligan? Mulligan. They do look similar. They do have similar looks. They've got similar looks. I just saw Michelle Williams in something. Oh, yeah, man. Um, Venom. Oh, yeah. That, She's the lady yeah, friend. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the Venom. See, I feel alone. I feel like everybody else I know is like, no, Venom's totally good. And I'm like, it no. it picks up in the last half, but it could have been a lot better. There's a lot of fun stuff in Venom, but the movie is a garbage movie that was not made well. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I do feel like they... They recycle... They did the same thing that this movie did. Yeah. That 1941 did, where... They have a chase scene, and they just use the same street over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. That's a, Somebody pointed that that's out. That's an issue. And then um, the rule with the symbiote that they just decide to ignore for an inexplicable reason. Yeah. Um, this is minor spoiler. It's not a big deal. Um, Venom's been out for like two months. If you and, haven't seen and it. And it's, not a, it's, your, not, it's your not a huge thing. But there, there's a, they basically set up this rule that um, if the... Symbiote doesn't find the right host. Yeah. Within three days, it dies. Ah. Um, there's a six month time jump. Right. Where the evil symbiote has been living inside of uh, an old woman. Right. For six months, but leaves that body for an inferior body to go find a different good body. Um. Does it leave for an inferior body? Well, I thought it, it left doesn't. The old woman for like a young kid. Yeah, but presumably the kid. It, I mean. And then, it doesn't stay in any of those people, right. except for the person and the one person for like. Why would it ever leave the, the the good host? It's a great point. It doesn't make any sense. That is a great point. But, and 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 wouldn't you rather watched the villain be an old Asian woman than <laughs> who it ended up being? Which I'll leave that at least spoiler free. I suppose that could have been a fun surprise. 
Like, to, oh, just happens to be this old lady who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. She got symbioted. It's like, if she was a good host, which she clearly was for six months. Yeah. Why why didn't he, like, use her, stay in her on the airplane? Why did he switch to the little girl? The only reason is to have the symbiote join with the little girl. Like, mm. there's no thought put into that. Yeah, that's yeah. That's bad filmmaking. Interesting. Why switch to the little girl? She had a plane ticket. Maybe that's why. He, I he don't could have know, he man. could have robbed a bank with that old woman and gotten the money to buy a plane. The old woman might have had. She, she was clearly a business owner. She could oh, have. Yeah. She could have bought a plane ticket. Could have bought a plane ticket to what city were they in? Frisco, San Francisco. Yeah. Apparently. Also, also the fact that it didn't take place in the MCU really bothered me. Yeah, yeah. There was like no references to any other. Marvel yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, well, they've since confirmed that it, it does not take place in the MCU. And um, in during the movie, I was like, well, clearly there would be at least some mention of Ant-Man. Mm. Or, or Giant Man. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? If if it did. But not in Venom, baby. I don't know. I just, uh, I was real let down with that movie. Understandable. I liked Tom Hardy in it. Yeah. I liked I liked their relationship. I didn't... I thought they jumped to, um, somebody asked me, like, what kind of movie it was. Yeah. And I, and my determination on this is it's a buddy cop film. A little bit. Um, about two, two guys from opposite sides of the track having to work together to solve a crime. That's essentially what that movie is. Except one guy shouldn't, shouldn't be here at all. Well, one's a loose cannon. Yeah. And one is a, a more, like, trying to do the right thing kind of, kind of guy. Hmm. Um, Venom the Buddy Cop. I feel like that should have been the second movie, maybe. I would have ah. liked to have seen more of a dichotomy between the difference. You know, like, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen Venom be a little bit less restrained. But hey, PG-13. PG-13. I'm sorry, we, we just went on a Venom. That's all right, man. Right. We haven't done an episode in a while, you know? Um, Sorry so- for all you that love Venom. Yeah, I mean, look, if you love Venom, hey, roll with it, baby. I'm glad you went out and saw a movie. Yeah, I saw Luci- Lucio Fulci's Zombie at a midnight screening. He's watching all those old movies, huh? Did you ever watch that? Uh, you, don't, you don't know. No, is it, is it the original Zombie or is it the American version? I mean, so, it's from like the late 70s. So they, so they made, so Fulci made like multiple zombie films. Oh. And I think the one that came out here first is actually zombie two if i remember correctly oh all right um this might have been zombie two it starts with a man in a smoky room shooting somebody i don't remember and then he says tell the men to get on the boat and then it cuts to that boat in new york city with no crew and so the police paddle on out to it and they investigate the boat and what do you think they find Zombies. Only one zombie yeah. on the boat. And then it's really gross, but a zombie fights a shark. And that part is great. And it's a very real shark. There's a, another film. Uh, nah, I don't want to say it's Italian. I want to say it's something else. Um, called Premutos. Premutos. Which is kind of in line with the style of filmmaking and just the gore and the the graphic effects. Yeah. Um it's it's not a good movie. Um but it's There's kind a of, lot of those. kind of fun to watch. All right. Um it's it's got a lot of slow moments yeah. um interspersed through it the 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 exposition where they explain or trying to explain the zombie demon thing yeah. uh is kind of boring. Okay. But uh but the it's it's supposed to be one of the most um uh, the goriest films ever made. Gross. But it's, it's in line with the Fulci, like, uh, zombie stuff. Fulci zombie is very gross. I don't remember who did... Uh, it's a disgusting movie. Premutus, I could look that up. It's a disgusting movie! Pre- um, but yeah, zo- a zombie in full makeup, under the surface of the ocean, fighting a shark, getting his arm chomped off. It's it's kind of magical. It's a magical moment. It's German. Olaf Ittenbach. Olaf Ittenbach... The man who would go on to create the first actual human centipede. Not the movie, the actual horror yeah. horror show of sewing people into a human centipede. We shouldn't pretend that's really happening anywhere. 
But if it is really happening anywhere and you know about it, you call the police on that human centipede, folks. How on the, on the centipede? Well, on whoever is the centipede's dad. I don't know what Centipede dad? The centipede's creator. Should uh, we dive into... Yeah, we should. I kind of don't want to. You don't even want to? No, I do. We need to talk about it because it's Spielberg. I mean, we're on the Spielberg Odyssey. I know. You know, it's funny. I didn't think the movie was that bad. I just thought it was not very funny and kind of boring in moments. Like, I, it was too long. Yeah. The plane chase sequence that they went down the same street over and over again. That was also too long. Got a little, quite a bit repetitive. Um, you know, I remember really thinking it was a hoot when I was a little kid and it would show up on TV. But I don't know if I ever saw it from beginning to end in one yeah. sitting. Because it was, A, it's long. B, there's commercial breaks. And so I only ever remember catching a few moments here and there. You know, the falling in the big the big hole in the front yard that the little brothers did. Oh, I remember sure. that. I remember uh, the Ferris wheel stuff. I I forgot how completely destructive that movie is. They destroy so much stuff. Other than like a clip here and there, the only thing I had seen, only scene I had seen in its entirety was the opening with Susan Backlinney. Ah, the Jaws sequence. The swimmer the, from the Jaws. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They start the movie very similar to how Jaws starts with the same woman yeah. going into the ocean to take a skinny dip. And she even does the leg thing she that does she does the, in Jaws where she like yeah. sticks her legs straight up in the air and then just sinks down. Yeah, the pointed leg sink. Yeah. And then I guess fortunately for her, instead of getting chomped to death by a shark, she winds up holding on to the I don't know what that thing even would be like an antenna I I, rod I can't from... remember if it was an antenna or if it was the periscope thing because remember inside it's oh. jumping it's going up and down on the inside of the submarine so I think it's maybe supposed to be the periscope maybe it thing. had something to do with the periscope so poor lady she's clinging to that naked as the sub emerges from the Pacific Ocean right off the coast of Los Angeles and uh only one guy spots her, and then we never see her again. I mean, the sub sinks. Yeah. I'm assuming she was able to swim away safely. The sub dives. The sub dives. But then we never see her again, and then another guy who gets taken onto the sub and then escapes, and we never see him again. Slim wow. Pickens. Was that Slim Pickens? Slim Pickens. That's great. I'm going to reveal just a fun childhood story right now. Yeah, oh, about Slim Pickens? I guess so. So, all since my childhood... We're talking about, like, you know, the three or four main blocks that I grew up on. Any time somebody would be playing around with a knife, which was very often in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. somebody would say, hey, boy, watch that knife. And we've all, as adults, completely forgotten where that line came from. Yeah. And I just rediscovered it today, watching 1941. It was 1941. And I could not believe it. That's why I had to send a text real quick, because I had to remind my buddy, holy crud, I just found out where, and I mean, we say it, we're grown men now. Yeah. And anytime we see somebody buttering a slice of bread, you know, cutting a piece of pumpkin, we say, hey boy, watch that knife. And we, none of us could remember where it was from. And it turns out it was from 1941, being on television all the live long day when we were children. View the right thing strikes again. View the right thing strikes again. It unlocked a door to the past. And I'm going to go knife shopping after this. Whoa. I probably won't. Uh, so, what did, did you did you like the movie? I mean, you know, it had enjoyable moments. Uh, there were some certainly like impressive moments from a filmmaking standpoint. Um, there were some weird things in it, though. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's there's a lot of racist humor going on. Yeah, that it was in today's lens just doesn't wash anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of like oh, it takes place in the 1940s, so I get it. But it still is nowadays kind of a shock to see. Yeah. I, think, I think more so when it's a movie that's a modern made movie. Yeah. Like, excuse me, if it was a movie that was made in 1940s and it had that stuff, it wouldn't feel as awkward to me. But the right. fact that it was made in the 80s and John Candy's character is like so upset that he's got soot on him and it makes him look black that. Right. Yeah. It. it it doesn't play as well. No, I can agree with that. 
And I guess it didn't play as well back when this movie came out because it didn't do very well, right? So, from my understanding, the movie actually did okay. Okay. It In terms of Steven Spielberg, it was a flop. Right. You know, keep in mind that he had done Jaws, which was the biggest film of all time. And then he did Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which was also very well well received. Great success. Um, and then he does this. Yeah. Uh, and it does... It, it, I think I'm sure I think it made its money back. I think it did okay, but compared right. to those other two films, it it was a considered a flop. Wow. Um but I mean the movie is nominated for 3 Academy Awards. 1941 was nominated for 3 Oscars? Yes. Uh so what? I want to say the music, the special effects and the Cinematography, which is interesting because yeah. Spielberg and the cinematographer had disagreements on set and the cinematographer quit and they replaced him. Whoa. But the original cinematographer is the one who got nominated for the award. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's pretty darn weird. Yeah. Which one, whose choice was it to have everything look like it was being seen through a thin fog? I would guess, I want to I want to say it was a Spielberg decision, although... Okay. It does come and go, so it could have been that it was that cinematographer and the new cinematographer didn't do that. Oh, okay. Um, I want to guess it was probably Spielberg to get that sort of like old, mm. nostalgic, like you like you're looking through a lens through time. Okay, interesting. Um, I, I wanted to just clean the lens so badly. Yeah, it really it really bothered me through, like especially the beginning of the movie. It, it was so distracting and hard to see. Yeah, it's it's a very um. What do they call that when that happens? Uh, not quite foggy. Foggy doesn't seem like the misty. It's got a very misty look. I don't know. Well, it's it's the very <laughs> it's the um, dewy look. No, not dewy. I'm trying to think what we used to call that. I mean, it's it was like you know people call it like a, a romance filter. Oh. Like it's the kind of thing you see that like softens all the edges. Like okay. you see it in like 1980s soap operas and stuff. Yeah. Um. A romance filter, but I mean, I've you know, I'm sure it's it's got some technical right. or more appropriate name to it, but uh, hmm, beer goggles. It's very it's very oh. glamour shots, you know. Glamour shots, yeah. It's it's definitely very glamour shots. Um, I, I thought the I thought the casting was a little strange. There were some pretty uh, famous people in this. Was, were they famous at the time? Not exactly sure. Feature film debut of? Probably Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Feature film debut of? Probably Eddie Deason. Oh, I don't uh, He was the nerd on the, I don't on the Ferris wheel. I think so. Wasn't he? Um, was he not in? He, he was, was in, in Greece. Some, so Greece might have been a couple years. Greece was this. definitely in the 70s. It was 1978. Um, Good old uh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey maybe? Rourke. It was the he screen gets, debut of Mickey he gets Rourke. One line. And probably some of those kids, but we don't yeah. know who they are. Oh man, Ned Beatty's kids were so adorable when they were like so excited about the possibility of seeing combat yeah. and just being. Oh, they were such little monsters. It was hilarious. There was a thing with um, the house, the whole the whole uh, house being destroyed. Oh yeah, the slide off the cliff. Um. That took so long for them to set up that the cast and crew had a pool going to see what day and time it was going to be Whoa. actually done. Wow. Because it kept delaying everything. Uh, Dan Aykroyd won the uh, the pool, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's good. Good to know he's got some money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good old Dan I was worried about Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> yeah. I do like him in this until, um, I don't know, the I'm a bug moment. It's just sort of like, well, What? Yeah, on its like, own, it's a funny idea, but in the context of this film, it doesn't work. Right. There's a lot of a lot of that where it's like all of the John Belushi stuff. Um, yeah, I really think, and I mean, I might have even heard on other podcasts here and there, but I really think that they were just like, you know what, you're John Belushi, Belushi it up. Well, and this is another one where like he showed up a lot, um, wasted, and uh, uh, like when he falls off the plane. He actually, yeah. that was actually, he accidentally fell off the wing of the plane. Oh, damn. And they just left it in because they were like, oh, if it's the character, it's funny. But, like, you know, mm -hmm. reality is he's up all night. Oh, jeez. You know, doing coke and stuff. So, knocking on strangers' doors probably. And right. That was, a, that was a thing he was known to do. So. Wow. 
Um, but the, yeah, it was like it was it was almost like they were like, well, he's so good on Saturday Night Live, just let him do his thing. And every time he drinks something, he spits it out on on you know on somebody. Uh, the thing with the squeaky toy we were talking about earlier. Yeah, for some reason there was just a squeaky toy under his deep pelvis in, when he was in his cockpit. I'm not quite sure where the deep in the heart of Texas came from. I guess maybe his character is from Texas. I don't because I think his name's he, like Wild Bill, right? But doesn't he mention where he's from I at one point? Can't and then remember. and then nobody. It's not anywhere in Texas. I yeah, think. just or maybe he does. None of his stuff. None of his stuff works. It probably when they're shooting it is really funny. Like that happens a lot when you're shooting something, right? Yeah. Like something in that moment is really great because you get to know those people, and it's like, oh, this guy I know is being really wacky right now. And, yeah. And maybe on Saturday Night Live, that kind of randomness works. In Animal House, that randomness probably works because that's right. very much the, the character. But like in this. That, some of the Dan Aykroyd stuff, like, once anybody becomes um, mentally unstable, it seems like, like... A lot of people get bonked on the head and sort of become different people. And it's like. so cartoony and... It's very cartoony. Uh, cartoony. I, I the don't whole know. thing. Yeah. Like, I, I, I remember feeling like I was just watching a Looney Tunes just being acted out by, by real human beings at times. I mean, you got... Yeah. You got Slim Pickens holding himself up to the ceiling of the submarine bathroom so he can drop down on all the guys yeah. that are keeping him ca captive. You've got... I thought some of the stuff that worked was like... Um, I thought the fight scene in the USO Club worked really well. The whole USO Club scene um, was pretty incredible. With the... Yeah, the, all the dancing and stuff. Um, I thought that uh, it was genius to put the... The Quiet Man music, the fight scene from The Quiet Man. See, you noticed that. I don't know if I would have ever recognized that. Yeah. I mean, I could hear it once you pointed it out. Well, I mean, again, View the Right Thing Strikes Again. View the Right Thing Strikes um, Again. I thought that, uh, I thought Robert Stack's character being obsessed with going to dump, like trying yeah. to do something really mundane, was, was, I thought that worked really well. That was cute. Uh, I, you know, they tried to get, um, John Wayne to play that part. Really? <laughs> Which is funny because they mentioned John Wayne on the submarine, but yeah. uh, he, he apparently turned it down and tried to convince Steven Spielberg not to make the movie altogether. Wow. Yeah. Um, I never heard about that. Yeah, and then they tried to get Charlton Heston. Oh, boy. And Charlton Heston turned it down. And uh, supposedly, you know, Kubrick and Spielberg were friends. Oh, yeah? And apparently Kubrick was like, it's like the movie's... I think I can't remember if he said the movie was good, but he basically was like the movie. The movie's well made, yeah. but it's not a funny movie. Wow. I guess Spielberg at one point was like maybe, and may, I suspect maybe around when they shot the USO stuff, mm. um, at one point almost turned it into a musical. Really? And I kind of wonder if it would have worked if it was a musical. Nineteen forty-one, the musical. Hmm. We'll never know. Yeah. Unless. Somebody with their own budget remakes that and an almost unbelievable love for the movie decides they're going to remake it as a full on musical starring uh, all those people's uh, grandkids. Um, gosh, there's so much to talk about in it. So many awesome stunts, man. There were some really great stunts. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they crash. A tank through a paint factory. They and then immediately, and then immediately crash it through a turpentine. That, uh, that uh, was a joke that worked for me. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I don't think I ever noticed that as a kid. But I mean, like Tree Williams and uh, Wendy What's her name on the rogue sidecar that's just oh, yeah. smashing and jumping through all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, the whole dance club fight scene is. I mean, what there had to be two hundred people in that room. Uh, and then you've got just all these wacky shots where, like, when, again, when Wendy, what's her name, um, you know, what's she, like, name? escapes from the fight and she charges up the stairs and then just, there just happens to be a dude at the top of the stairs, so she just decks him because she feels like it and it's the exact situation to get away with such a thing. Right. I have no idea if that woman's name is Wendy anything. Oh, I was looking for a Wendy in here. It might be. 
Uh, um, sorry, I got I got to know because I, I feel like we're doing a, mis, a a disservice to her. She's been in some great stuff. Oh so. man, she was in so much stuff back in the eighties. Patty Lapone was in this. Patty Lapone was uh, the bartender who tries to offer the deviled eggs to treat Williams, uh, and then she shows up in a lot of other shots after that as well, and has a couple lines here and there. Wendy Joe Sperber. It it was Wendy something. Wendy Jo Sperber. She's somebody's sister in some 80s movie, right? I mean, Back to the Future. She's in, oh, she's in yeah. Back to the Future. She's Marty's sister at the beginning of Back to the Future. She was in Moving Violations. She was one of the Bachelor girls Party. in Bosom Buddies. She was in Bachelor Party. She's, she she's died. Tons of stuff. She died? At the age of 47. Wendy Jo Sperber died? Remember at the beginning I was like, we haven't seen her in a long time. What happened to her? Oh. That's real sad. That's very sad. I'm I'm real bummed out about that. She was she was really a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, she did. She always did good, funny work. I mean, in this, when she gets introduced, her and the other girl come out of the car, and she's just like dancing, like dancing a, the whole time. A maniac, they're talking. and it's it is it's it's, it's really so fun silly. to watch. Yeah, and it's like she's just she's walking toward the house, talking to her friend, but everything is a dance move, and it's it's pretty hilarious. Apparently, she was a dancer in Greece. Well, there you have. She it. was on Bosom Buddies. The TV show uh, Private Benjamin. Oh, I forgot. Oh, Private man. Benjamin had a TV show. She was in so much stuff. Married with children, dinosaurs. Who was she married with children? Oh, this is like an episode. Sandy Jorgensen. Sandy Jorgensen. Yeah, good old Sandy Jorgensen. And yeah, the uh, oh, I think I think someone's home. Do we have an arrival? An arrival is somebody coming in the door. Say hi. You're yeah, on the air with Kylie. Do the Right Thing. Kylie's here. So, um, what, uh, where were we? I lost my place. Talking about crazy stunts. Oh, Wendy, poor Wendy Jess Perber. I'm just, I, I, it's really dragging me down here. Well, you know, it's the circle of life, my friend. Yeah, but 45? It's, it's heartbreaking. I think it was 47. But still, that doesn't ease the blow in the slightest. 47, you're right. But still, 47 and 45 are not that different. I mean, Steve, I know. we're getting up there. We're, we're climbing that mountain right now. The mountain of time and inevitable age. Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee, we haven't even mentioned that Christopher Lee plays the Nazi who's riding along in the Japanese sub for research, I guess. This is like... Is his real life pedigree hero, Christopher Lee? Is his pedigree? It's not German, right? Like he's not. He's not. Pretty sure he's English. I thought he was like British or something, right? Yeah. But, but you know. he spoke German very convincingly. If you didn't know it was Christopher Lee, you probably wouldn't recognize him. I'm gonna let you in on something. Have you ever been to England? A lot of Germans. No, saying. but English people. When you go to England, they all speak at least French. And usually sure. at least one other European language. Because they're just educated a lot but better than we are. there's people who speak another language, and then there's people who speak another language so well that you believe that they're German. And I and I was like, does Christopher Lee, like, was he German? I was like... Hey. Well, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't he... Uh, uh, he was definitely, you know, in World War II... And you can look him up. I'm pretty sure he had some pretty intense uh, run-ins with the Nazis. So he probably learned German. And then maybe knowing German helped make him pretty... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Instrumental in a lot of his World War II uh, uh, maybe. duties and assignments and what have you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, there was all those Chuck Norris jokes that have gone around for years. And then recently somebody put together one about how, like, Christopher Lee is actually way more impressive than Chuck Norris will ever be. Because he, like, you know, really took a Nazi knife to the gut in a, in actual combat one day and all Jeez, sorts of wild that's stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, that guy is intense. Uh, Toshiro Mifune. Was he the, uh, the, the captain of the sub? Yeah. Cool. He, uh, he also, I believe, yeah. was a World War II veteran. Whoa, um, and apparently, like the the actors on the submarine yeah. were a little um, they didn't take any of it seriously. Yeah, and uh, and I guess one day he just like 
slapped one around and was Whoa. like, this is not how pe- how they would have acted on, you know, in yeah. the war and da da da. And he like set them all straight. And from that moment on, Spielberg just let him deal with those guys. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Toshiro Mifune of. Oh, I thought I recognized that picture there. It oh, like, he's in a bunch of stuff. It looked like Seven Seven Samurai. Uh, yeah, I think so. He was in Yojimbo. Yojimbo the Bodyguard. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Midway. He was in some good stuff. Safari Five Thousand. Whoa! Never even heard of that. We're even going to get to the year Five Thousand. What about Transylvania Six Five Thousand? No, we don't have to talk about that. Sweet. We're coming up on uh, ten minutes left in the recording time. What does this thing stop it? It Stops automatically at one hour. Whoa, that's going to be a thing for us. Well, fortunately, this is 1941, so... <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot not a lot to talk there's, about. There's a lot of really famous people in the movie, which is always fun to see. It's a veritable, you know, who's who. As you watch it, you can be like, well, there's so-and-so, and there's what's-her-name, and there's well, so there was, Michael McKeon. There was, uh, we, you mentioned Lorraine Gary. Mm-hmm. Also, um, what's his name, who was the mayor of Amity. Mayor very, mayor very Long. Mayor Larry Vaughn, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, and My then, kids were on that beach too, Martin. Uh, the the gas station that he pulls up to in the in the, air, oh, yeah. in the airplane. Where was that gas station? It was the gas station and the same woman who ran the gas station. Oh, from Duel. From Duel. Yeah. And then they blow it up. I hope they didn't blow up the real gas station. They blew it up. It looked pretty real. I mean, you know, Hollywood movie magic. They blow up a gas station. They blow up uh, something on the airfield when they, they accidentally destroy- drop the bomb at ground level and it just rolls into that thing and blows up. Um, yeah. They destroy the gas station in Duel, too. Do they? Yeah, don't they? Don't they, like... They might. All he, Like, the truck drives through. Isn't that where all the lizards are? She's like, my, oh, yeah. my lizards, my oh, snakes, or whatever. I about all the reptiles. Yeah. But do they explode it, or do they just drive through it and smash it? I can't remember now. It's been so long since we watched Duel. That Almost a year. gas station. Really? We started this journey last year. Whoa. Pretty sure. And we're we started, in November of this year. I thought we started it very early this year. Well, let's see. We, we, we did... Uh, we did... So this was originally going to be... We're back in the spring. In March, Whoa. we did... What was the last one? Jaws? Mm, no. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. And then before that was Jaws. So that before would have been in was... February. So January would have been Duel. Wow. Which means... No, January would have been Sugarland Express, which means December would have been Duel. Whoa. Unless we did two in a month. I don't remember that. I don't think we did. So so it's been a, almost a year and we're only five movies in. Well. On this long 30-something film journey. What's I know we're gonna have to deal with West Side Story. The next movie, and, uh, the next one, I believe, is Raiders of the Lost Ark. I can be really, wrong. it goes Raiders, not ET. Oh no, ET is is a yeah. couple away. Oh, we got. I think we got Color Purple before ET. What? I think so. Color Purple did not come out before ET, sir. Well, let's find out. There's no um, way. Color Purple. I mean. That was like late eighties, if not. I've got the list somewhere, but why did I just type that? I mean, we're doing them in order of release, right? Not. Uh, yeah, let's see. I'm pretty sure we're looking at ET. That color purple is pretty early, but I could be wrong. But it's not before ET. Come on, calm bro. down. Calm down. I'm working on it. I'm just getting all angry, like Danny Glover in the color purple. No, you just need to. Call- they're, you know, they're remaking color purple. They're, you're going to do the musical version. Really? And Steven Spielberg is at least producing it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and Oprah is also producing it. Oprah Winfrey? That is the one. I the was one and only. It might be the other Oprah. Well, Oprah and then Harpo. Right. Which is her character. Right. And then. Why can I? Why can I get of, this to go to his filmography? Some sort of other Oprah from a. Uh, from a different universe. 61 films, by the way. He's directed 61? I mean, they just listed 61 projects as a director. There's oh. some short stuff in here. Amblin and whatnot. Firelight. If I'm not mistaken, this is just off the top of my head. It's you're right, go. E.T. You're right, E.T. is 
is after Raiders of the Lost Ark, though. So it's going to go Raiders, E.T. Do we watch Poltergeist? We will, but... Uh, With an asterisk. Yeah, I think we should. Because we right. know everybody knows Spielberg really directed it. Mm. Something in 1983. A movie in 1983? Yeah. Directed by Steven Spielberg? Partially. We just, Partially? We mentioned it earlier when we were watching 1941. Steven Spielberg cut uh, an, another director who had a cameo in 1941 out of 1941. Oh, yeah. So are you talking, Wes? Yeah. Are you asking me if you want to see something really scary? Yeah, also featuring Dan Aykroyd. Um, are you sure? Yeah. It's pretty scary. So the question is, do we watch that? Wow. He only did one segment in it, but... Technically, Ooh, I haven't watched Twilight Zone the movie. It's the best segment, though. In uh, kick, so very long. Kick the can. I don't even remember. With all the old people. Oh, and they're playing. They play kick the can. And they all yell "Ali, Ali, oxen free" a bunch and all that stuff. Or am I thinking <laughs> uh, that might have been an amazing story? Um, okay, so we'll have to decide on Twilight Zone the movie. But uh, all right, I could. I'm down for it. I could take it or leave it, but I'm down for it. Um, we got Raiders, we got E.T., it sounds like maybe Poltergeist, we got Temple of Doom, then Color Purple. Temple of Doom. I don't know why I thought Color Purple was so early. I was listening to a podcast recently, and they were covering, I think, Temple of Doom. And the ho the host pointed out, he was like, you gotta understand, like, the guys making this movie, they weren't even sure if they could ever come back to America because of what happened with Twilight Zone. And he's like, so, you know, when they're making this movie, you can tell these are a lot of really angry guys making this movie. And I was like, ah, I never really thought about that before, huh. seeing as I haven't seen Temple of Doom since I was a child. I watched it not that long ago. Yeah. Uh, it's a fun movie. We'll, we'll discuss it yeah, when we uh, Doom, get baby. to it. It's, it's actually my favorite of all the Indiana Jones films. That one's your favorite. My favorite. Not, not, I'm not saying it's the best made. I'm saying it's my favorite. More so than the pilot episode of Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Yes, that is. That's not a movie. Technically, you're correct. All right. I guess we're gonna wrap it up. I don't think We've there's got any, three more there, minutes. Is there anything else we can say about 1941 that we has been said? Well, uh, was just that? you know, if you're thinking about revisiting it, they they pretty much take a racist jab at. Almost everybody you can think of. Yeah, well, you know the movie when they wrote it was called "When Japs Attack." Oh my God, really? Yeah, I didn't do not mean to offend anyone. I'm just saying you're quoting. I'm, I'm you're just, quoting. Um, I get you. Uh, that's a much different title. Um, how lovable was Ned Beatty in this movie? He's lo he's lovable. When he shows up at the beginning, he's got paint on his nose. Yeah, which we don't know why. I mean, um, he, he he was out. Dealing with paint, so presumably he was painting something. Well, why the gun? Was he painting Carrying the gun? Carrying the gun around while he goes to get paint from the garage. And maybe he was painting the gun. I suppose it's something that somebody might do one day. Yeah. Paint. I mean, they painted their wagon. Why not paint your gun? That's my dad's favorite musical. Really? Yeah. With uh, Lee Marvin? And Clint Eastwood. And Clint Eastwood. And paint your wagon. Yeah. We, um, we got to warn people about... Uh, the, you know, the racism, the misogyny. I mean, girls are literally just getting dragged around by, by soldiers and sailors and Marines at the USO. Just like, you know, guys are just grabbing them by the wrist, laying claim, dragging them away. I was really hoping that one dude would get in a fight with Treat Williams. Because it looked like that one guy was about seven feet tall. Man, that, that Treat Williams, there was, I got uncomfortable in the scene where he dragged her into the car. Yeah. It was too, it was too rapey. Sure it was. Uh so you know, it's it, it's uh it's a movie that started off as a comedy, granted a comedy about war and a violent invasion. Um right. and all these years later it's also a lot about misogyny and racism. Uh uh it's it's got its problems. Oh, 1941, you've got your problems. So if you're thinking about revisiting it, if you're thinking about showing it to your kids for nostalgia purposes, you know, you're being warned right now. We're warning you. All right. Until our next episode is Born Under a Wandering Star. Mm. Everyone, we'll see you next time. Bon Cinema.